As the spring home buying market is upon us, the real question that we're looking for in the data is not whether this boom is somehow ending, but rather how much more is it continuing to boom? The defining characteristics of this crazy real estate market have been the record few homes for sale in the face of this record high demand. That trend continues another week this week, even as other financial markets are super volatile. So Americans are still flocking to housing. Each week, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country. We analyze all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in that data, and then we make that available to you before you see it in the traditional channels. Traditional real estate data is monthly. So by the time it gets to you, it's kind of old news. So the news right now is that it's a hot market already for the spring. And the economic risks like rising rates or a falling stock market have not yet derailed that eager American home buyer. I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the CEO of Altos Research. And this is what the data is telling us right now. So this week, yet again, we've hit another record low in available inventory of un unsold single-family homes on the market. Just 272,000 single-family homes for the entire country. In normal markets at the end of January, that's sort of the low point of inventory for the year. You can see in this chart, each year bounces along the trough. Uh, each week is pretty close to the next. Uh, some are up, some are down a little bit. By mid to late February in normal years, inventory starts climbing. Uh, you get uh, new listings coming on. But in normal years, you'd have fewer buyers while it's still winter. Uh, you can see that pattern here in 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20. Last year, at the end of January, inventory was still falling a couple percent each week. Buyers were buying faster than the new listings would hit the market. Inventory didn't stop falling until the end of April. That phenomenon is underway again this year. Yeah, available inventory declined by almost 2% again this week. Uh, we had to adjust the y-axis on the inventory chart here to allow the, for the lowest level ever. Uh, based on the fact that inventory hasn't slowed it's weekly decline yet. It really looks like we're probably ending for aiming for the end of April again before we start to see a little inventory increase for the year. Uh, speaking of that, uh, the next week, February 10th uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific, we'll have our monthly webinar. In it, we take uh, an hour to deep dive into the data. So one of the things we'll cover is the forecast of inventory trends for the rest of the year. So. If uh, you're trying to estimate or understand how the market is going to go through 2022, the webinar next week is for you. Uh, there's a link to register in the description below. Click that to join us. That's Thursday, February 10th at 10 a.m. Pacific. We'll include inventory forecast for the rest of 2022. Uh, not surprisingly, the leading indicators for pricing are up too. Uh, in this price chart, we have two lines. The dark red line is the median price for all the homes on the market right now at 375000 This is unchanged from last week uh, and continues to be up well over 10% from last year. Uh, the more interesting story is the light red line here. The price of the newly listed properties is up 1.3% over last week at 369,900. Remember that the price of the new listings reflects all that the sellers and the listing agents know about demand in their local markets. They know how many bidders the last ha happened on the last sale. They know how many people are lining up for the open house down the street. And because these are all strong, they know they can increase the pricing on their new listing as it, as it hits the market. So we can see this light red line here spike very quickly this year. All the signs point to another 10, 12 or more percent home price gains for 2022. Even though you know there are some of these economic trends that threaten to slow the market, uh, those trends have not hit the actual 
housing data yet. If you follow the Altos data, you'll know that we have been tracking the immediate sales phenomenon for a year now. Uh, the immediate sales are the homes that get listed for sale uh, and then take offers and go into contract essentially immediately. There are, this week, 25,000 of the new listings went into contract immediately. It's like a third of the market. In this chart here, the light portion of the line are the new listings, which went into were also immediate sales. The dark portion are those new listings, which didn't sell immediately, like take a week or more. Uh, the thing to note here, the recent weeks, that's the right end of the chart. You can see the volume increasing, as we'd expect for January, uh, you know, past the holidays. But the size of the light red portion is also increasing. That's showing us that each week we have an increasing proportion of the market going into contract immediately. So it's a third of the market, 25,000 out of 75,000 new single family listings this week. There's absolutely no signs of demand slowing whatsoever. Uh, and because immediate sales are both new listings and also new sales in the same week, here's the same data with the immediate sales plotted uh, against the absorbed total absorbed set each week. Those going into contract. So we started tracking the immediate sales a, years, a year ago. You can see the light red portion of the line here as a proportion of the, the sales. Uh, and in this view, immediate sales is growing here too. You can see the rapidly climbing sales rate in January at the right end of the chart. Uh, I actually think there's more than just demand here that's allowing this number to increase. So more participants, sellers and buyers, understand that this is happening and therefore are more prepared for it. So the system is processing more offers and contracts more quickly. Last January, we were still in sort of a pandemic shock, and this phenomenon was much more of a surprise. So right now, 27% of all the new contracts this week were essentially immediate. It's really remarkable. Another bullish sign for future transaction prices are uh, the price reductions. So the percent of homes on the market with price reductions. It's already fallen below last year's already crazy level. The way to read the price reductions chart is this. You can see each year's cycle. In Q1 and Q2, we have the most new listings hitting the market. As they come on, they're, they're priced well, and they, they don't have to take a price cut yet. So the percentage of price reductions falls. There are always some, always some, homes on the market with price reductions. Sometimes those are accidentally overpriced, some are intentional, but there's always some on the market that'll take a price cut before they sell. So when Overbidding is common. Fewer homes have to take a price cut. So in normal markets, maybe 27 or 28 percent in January have taken a cut. Right now, we're under 20. Fewer price cuts now means the tra higher transaction prices in the future when these sales close. So in a month or two, February or March. Price reductions as a leading indicator of demand and of transaction prices right now is already stronger than last January, if that's even possible. Finally today, days on market. Uh, the current days on market, median days on market is 56 days. That includes homes that you know were on the market, sat on the market over the holidays, the slower holiday period. What's wild here is that this is really the high point for the year. So the market time only falls from here. You can see last year, days of market was roughly 70 days when we started the year. Normal January might be 100 days, three months to sell your home. Um, right now, the high end of the market in the U.S., like the, the million dollar homes, the market time for these is about 75 to 80 days. It takes a little longer to sell the expensive stuff. Uh, but this is declining rapidly. What this tells us is that demand is across all price points around the country. It's not isolated to just you know, $300,000 homes or super affordable homes or conventional loans or something. It's across the market. Uh, we will spend more time in the webinar next week looking at demand across price points. 
Okay, that's all the data we have time for today. As I mentioned, uh, there is a link to register for that webinar in the description below. That webinar is Thursday, February 10th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, click that to register. We get a ton of participants in these webinars each month, so you should join us too. Uh, if you subscribe to the Altos Research YouTube channel, uh, you'll get reminders each week when we publish the latest data. Uh, stay tuned uh, for the Deep Dive webinar as well as our new Top of Mind podcast. We have a really cool Top of Mind podcast this week, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, to get your your own Altos data for your local markets, go to altosresearch.com, book time with our team. There's a link in the description for that as well. Click that, join us. More next week.